these past few weeks have been filled with reminders. Reminders of where I came from, where I am now, and why I live the way that I do. As you may know, nearly three weeks ago now, at the time of editing this video, I had surgery on my throat. I had long needed to get this done, and it was something I've been putting off for years now. After spending much of my youth in and out of hospitals, I am never very keen to get back into them, but I finally decided to bite the bullet and get it done so I could move forward free of that weight. The first two weeks of recovery were difficult, as you may imagine, but not as bad as I had been expecting. I spent a lot of time working on art, sitting with my dogs, and making the soft foods that I could actually manage to eat during this time. Very kindly, my mom came into town to help out with what she could, and one day while she was out, she found a huge box of apples for free on the side of the road. Thus, my great endeavor to cook them down and make quite a bit of applesauce. If you can believe it, this was only half of the apples she brought back, and I still have the other half waiting to be used. I think I will make a pie with them next week, or maybe something else altogether. Not entirely sure yet. If you have any suggestions, let me know. Either way, I am just looking forward to making other things beyond soup and uh, mush. Because I was deemed a high bleeding risk by my surgeon, I was ordered to stay in the city for a minimum of two weeks. Though this may not seem like such a big deal to some, I am not personally very comfortable staying confined between the walls of my apartment for so long, and it ultimately ended up being nearly three weeks before I was able to leave. I don't believe I've gone this long without spending at least a moment in nature in many, many years, if ever. Though, despite my displeasure for being confined to the indoors, this time spent apart from the earth has reminded me of its importance in my life. And when I finally got the chance to go back into it, it reawakened something within me, filling me with inspiration and rekindling my energy. I don't know if you can tell how smoky it is today, but you can hardly even see the islands. I'm really starting to run low here. I'm gonna have to get my hands on some more elderberries soon. So here I have some elderberries and some honey, and I am gonna be setting up to make some, well, elderberry honey. It's one of the steps in crafting an elderberry syrup if you wanna do it the full, full way, so. I've uh, got to get that started today. I've been meaning to get this done, and we are entering 
the time of the year where this is quite useful to have. Elderberry syrup will likely forever remain one of my favorite uh, cold and flu cures. And if you've been here for a while, you'll know that I make a simple version of it quite often for uh, cases that come up unexpectedly. So like this summer, if I got sick this summer, a friend did, I was making elderberry syrup. But I tend to like to keep it on hand going into the winter months just because it's a little more expected to be feeling a little off during that time. Now, either method works well. You can make the quick version and it will work pretty much as well as this version that is uh, a little more in-depth. I just find you get a more well-rounded um, profile from a more in-depth version of the syrup and it does last longer. And this is mainly due to it having a tincture as part of its design. But I already have the tincture done and I can whip up a decoction in an hour. So the only thing left to make is a honey and it will have to set up for about four to six weeks, but uh, it will be getting closer to all of that being done and ready. So let's get started, shall we? To make a honey, all you need to do is combine your elderberries with your honey and let it set. Some people like to let it set in the windows, but I personally prefer to keep them in dark places, except for a few herbs. So pretty simple. Now just to let that set. I cannot even begin to express to you how Wonderful it feels to be back. I have been walking through all of my favorite parts of these forests for days now. Getting up before the sun so I can get here and just be still while the nature wakes up. And it has been so beautiful. We live in a pretty beautiful world. <laughs> I can't even believe it. I think I have found a new favorite place out here. It is so beautiful. I have been looking for um, as many places as I can find to watch the sunrise every morning. And uh, well, this one doesn't really get the view of the sun as it comes up from over there. You can see it uh, kind of bringing light to the water behind me. 
I don't know if you can really see it that well, but uh, it's just beautiful with the islands and the fog on the water. You can probably hear the birds are waking up too, but it just feels like a special place. Very peaceful and quiet. Sometimes I think you need a reminder of the things that you love for them to kind of be special again. I think it's really easy to take what we have for granted and uh, you only remember what it is, what you have when it is taken from you for a time. I'm very grateful for all of the reminders I've had in my life of these things, but the ones that uh, deal with health always hit home the hardest and really remind me of why I live the way that I do. I'm grateful that I can walk forth through here with a rekindled appreciation. I am hopeful to get out to the mountains soon to hopefully see some of the changing leaves before it's too late. But anyways, I am rambling. I found a ton of usnia this morning, so I think I am gonna gather up some more of this and uh, maybe make another tincture of it to have on hand, but that will be for the next video, because now I need to finish editing this one.